welcome to chapel service for the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I am Becky Hand, pastor at Life and Grace in Odessa, Texas. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the blessings that you have poured out upon us, for the things that we receive, and the things that we take for granted, and the things that we stop to take time to appreciate. We thank you for the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. We thank you for ILT and the difference that it makes in the lives of students and in the lives of your body on earth, in the life of the church. We pray for your will to be done at ILT in each of the faculty members, the staff, and the students, and the students that are to come. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to the Institute and the blessings of the donors, the financial donors, and those who volunteer their time and their skills to help out the Institute. We ask for your presence with us this day and always. We thank you for this time we have gathered around your word and ask that you bless the reading and the hearing and the preaching. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Our reading today is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning in the 25th verse. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. This Gospel lesson is pretty straightforward, isn't it? Jesus is telling us to help our neighbor, which would be anyone in need. Not just the people we like or the people we really understand. I mean, the Samaritans and the Jews were sworn enemies. Go ahead and help anyone in need, even if it cost you some time and effort. That's it, right? I mean, that's, that's the basic gist of the story. But who are we in this story? How do we fit in? Can you, for instance, relate to the priest? He represents the highest religious leadership among the Jews. Could we really expect him to reach out and help a stranger in need? If he had touched this man, he would have become ritually unclean, and the cleansing process would take time, and it would draw him away from his other duties. Surely he had better things to do, more important things to take care of, than to stop and to help someone who was bleeding on the side of the street. Are we like the priest in this story? Maybe we're more like the Levite. The Levite would be like a lay associate of the priest. I think maybe we can relate to him. We can relate to him because we have all passed up opportunities to help people. Just like the Levite, we have passed by people in need because we didn't want to become ritually unclean. We had our excuses. We're too busy, we're in too much of a hurry today, there's just not enough time. Maybe it's not safe. If I give him my money, what am I going to eat lunch with? 
We just, like the priest and the Levite, couldn't stop because we had an excuse. Maybe we can relate to the robbed man. What about him? Have you ever been robbed or physically hurt by someone? I think we can all relate to the robbed man, the victim. Somehow we have been beaten, taken advantage of, left for dead, physically hurt, helpless, out of work because we're hurt, broke because our money was stolen, out of town, alone. I think we can all identify on some level with the victim in this story. The Samaritan, though. What about the Samaritan? Can we relate to him? Have you ever helped somebody? Have you ever gone out of your way to help somebody? Maybe even put yourself at risk? Used whatever you had? Given your own money? Gone back to pay more if it was needed? Have you ever done all of this knowing that you would never be repaid? Can we relate to the Samaritan in this story? I think maybe we relate better with the robbed man than the Samaritan. Granted, we may have done some of the things the Samaritan did in this story, but have we done all of them at one time? Like the Samaritan did? Probably not. I don't think we really know what it feels to reach out the way the Samaritan did. We have probably all helped people. We have given up ourselves and of our time and our money. But I, I don't know that we've ever gone the extra mile the way the Samaritan did. We know what it feels like to be victimized. But how can we really know what it feels like to be the Samaritan? I know what it feels like to pass by someone in need, like the priest and the Levite. I can relate to that, and you probably can too. And we can relate to being victimized. Who knows what it feels like to be the Samaritan in this story who took his precious time and his effort and his money put himself at risk all to help someone who probably hated him. He went out of his way to help patch up a stranger that he knew didn't like him. He worked to heal the stranger's wounds. He paid his money out of pocket, and he didn't have more to leave with the manager where he left him because he said, I'll come back and, and pay you if you spend more. You know, have you ever promised to come back and make good on a debt? I don't know about you, but my best good Samaritan moves aren't that good. Jesus really kind of seems to be placing the bar way too high. How can we give everything we have and then give some more? How can we show that kind of kindness to people in the world who don't even like us? How can we love our enemy that way? How can we do any of this when we're so busy, when we don't want to become unclean, when we don't have the time or we don't have the money or we're tired? How can we be like this guy? Isn't that just asking too much to give what we have? To use what we might need for someone else, someone who's not our friend, someone who should have known better than to be out there walking alone anyway, it's not safe to travel that way. Maybe we aren't the Samaritan because we're just not that good. Maybe we're the priest and the Levite and the victim. But maybe Jesus knows what he can do through us because he knows what he has already done for us. He has already spent all that he had to heal your wounds, to save your life. And maybe because he has promised to come back here and get you, and maybe he knows that when we remember what he has done for us, we feel a little more gracious. We feel like we can give a little bit more because of what he's already given. Maybe he knows when we remember what he has done for us that we'll remember what he can do through us for our neighbor, even the ones we don't really like that much. Maybe he sees himself in you. 
Maybe Jesus sees more of him in you than we see of him in ourselves. And because he knows what he can do, he knows what you can do because of him. Not because you're good, but because he is good. Not because you have no fear, but because there is no fear in him. Not because you love so freely, but because He is love. And He is with you. He's with you when you're the victim. He's with you when you're the priest. He's with you when you're the Levite. And He is with you and working through you when you're the Samaritan. He is with you and working in you and through you. Thanks be to God, who is good all the time. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, draw our hearts to you. Guide our minds and fill our imaginations. Control our wills that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and to the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the good Lord. Thanks be to God.